I found 15 passive income ideas that earn as much as $10,000 a month in 2024. Now, some of these are truly passive, meaning you could start them tonight and earn passive income. Some of them take a bit of work before you can earn passive income. And some of them are a little bit less passive than others, but all of these are going to be good options that you can look into. And I can almost guarantee that many of them on this list you have never heard of. So if you appreciate me doing videos like this, go ahead and let me know by gently tapping that like button. And let's jump into it with number one on the list, which is going to be selling templates. All right, so there's so many different types of templates that you can sell online. Some of them include resumes, presentations, websites, Excel sheets for finances. And one of my favorite ones is Notion templates. So for instance, with the Notion template example, there's a website called Notion. You may or may not be familiar with it, but it's a website that helps with organization and getting things done. And it's extremely popular among the productivity community. And there are many ways to create custom Notion templates and then sell them to other people to help them with their organization and productivity. And there's a YouTuber named Thomas Frank who started a second YouTube channel, started selling these Notion templates and made it to over $100,000 a month in revenue. And there's another Twitter user named Islo who talked about how he made over $500,000 selling Notion templates as well. But it's not just Notion templates. There's many different things you can sell such as financial planning Excel sheets, websites, social media graphics, thumbnail templates, etc. And there's a lot of different places you can sell them such as Etsy, Creative Market, or even your own website. And the great thing about creating a template is you create it one time and then after that, once it's starting to sell, it's completely passive. So yeah, this is a really good option. It's also something that I think is super underrated. Not enough people are doing it. I'm gonna give this one a nine out of 10 opportunity score. What's up guys? So we're gonna be having a live training where I'm going to be teaching you how to grow and make money from your YouTube channel, okay? So this is gonna be stuff that I've never taught before. It's probably the only time I'm ever gonna teach it, so definitely you wanna show up for it, and it's gonna be at Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, okay? So the link to it will be down in the description or swipe up or whatever, it'll, it'll say it on the screen, but definitely check it out. You don't wanna miss out on this. Next is going to be REITs, and this stands for Real Estate Investment Trust. And this is truly a passive way of making income. And basically, this is how you can invest in real estate without having to do all of the dirty and hard labor. So the way it works is you invest your money into a REIT, and then you get a small portion of a bunch of different pieces of real estate. And then whenever the REIT company makes money from the real estate, you get a dividend or you get a percentage of the money that they make. And by law, REITs have to pay out at least 90% of their taxable profits to shareholders. So they're doing 100% of the work and you're getting at least 90% of the profits. So this is a really good way to make truly passive money and it's also a great way to diversify your investment portfolio. But with that being said, if you wanna make a significant amount of money, you're gonna have to invest a significant amount of money as well. So for that reason, I'll give this one a seven out of 10 opportunity score. Next on the list is going to be selling education educational worksheets. And this basically involves creating and marketing educational materials such as study guides, lesson plans, or practice sheets, and then selling it on an e-commerce platform. And then it'll be purchased by either students, teachers, or parents who are seeking supplementary education materials. And if you think you can't make money doing this, well, Michelle Schroeder Gardner makes over $400,000 a year selling educational printables. Now there's many different websites you could sell this on, but one of them would be Shopify. They charge about 3% per transaction plus 30 cents. Another one would be Etsy and they charge about 6.5% of the total order. And another website would be teacherspayteachers.com and they'll do a lot of the marketing for you, but they also charge a pretty steep price. Depending on the plan you sign up for, you'll make 55 to 80% per sale. Plus you have to pay an extra 15 to 30% per transaction. So yeah, this one is pretty good. A lot of opportunity here. There's a lot of people out there that either need help creating educational materials or maybe they're homeschooling their kids. So I'll go ahead and give this one an eight out of 10 opportunity score. By the way, if you're enjoying this video and you think of some somebody else out there that might enjoy it well, go ahead and share it with them. It helps the channel out a lot and it'll help out the other person. So definitely do it. Next is going to be flipping blogs or websites. So there's many websites you can do this. One of them is going to be flippa.com. And this is where you can buy a tiny blog or website, and then you can flip it for a higher amount. So it's very simple. You buy low, sell high. And there's this guy named Yara who talked about how he made $180,000 in profit by buying and selling websites part-time. There's another guy named Rob who talks about how he bought a website 
website for 52,000 and then sold it for 178,000 a year later. And yeah, this is actually a very common side hustle. You don't have to just do it with blogs. You can also just do it with domain names. So if you find a domain name that you think is undervalued or one that you think is going to kind of take off in the near future, you can buy it for a very low price and then sell it for much higher later on. So yeah, this is a very common one. It's been around forever. You have to have an understanding of why blogs or domain names sell for low or you know they buy for high. So this is something that you want to familiarize yourself with. But it's basically something where if you know it's a really good keyword that a bunch of people are going to be searching in the future, you can just buy it and hold it for years and then sell it later on for a huge profit. And it's extremely passive. So I'll go ahead and give this one an 8.5 out of 10 opportunity score. Next is going to be creating and selling online courses. Now this is a great way of making money and there's many people out there that want a step by step guide on how to do something. You know, they don't want to search across the internet, search on Google, search on YouTube, you know, have to see a bunch of ads and sponsorships. They just want a step by step guide on how to do something quickly and efficiently. And there's tons of people out there making money from courses. So for instance, this guy says that he built and sold an online course for $6 million in two years. Michelle talks about how she made over a million dollars from her first course without a big launch and a former high school math teacher earned $1 million teaching online coding courses. So there's lots of different websites where you can research what types of courses people are looking for and people are making, and then make your own course and upload it. Some of my personal favorites are Udemy as well as Skillshare. And I've taken many courses from both Udemy and Skillshare. Now these are typically lower ticket courses where you're teaching something that's sort of a commodity. So something like Python, so that's something that a lot of people out there know, and you're just teaching it and making it a little bit more fun, or you're a little bit more insightful. And so people buy your course over others. Now you can sell courses for higher ticket prices, but typically you have to do your own marketing. And a lot of the time it's going to have to be a course in something that's more rare, right? You have to learn a rare skill set and then sell a course teaching people how to do that. So for instance, a lot of YouTubers sell courses teaching other people how to do YouTube. For more complicated stuff, I typically haven't found courses to be that helpful. And instead, I like to invest in coaching because nothing is going to help you learn a complicated skill faster than having a mentor, someone who can kind of stand over your shoulder, hold your hand and help you as you learn it. But yeah, the great thing about uploading on Udemy or Skillshare is the fact that they actually just do the marketing for you. So this can be a great side hustle, absolutely phenomenal. Think of something that you uniquely know, something that's unique about you, something that you're really good at, and then think of what the market actually wants, and then make a course that fills both of those needs. I'm going to give this one a 9.5 out of 10 opportunity score. Next is going to be starting a YouTube channel. Now, this is something that I have to warn you is definitely not passive when you first start it. It takes a lot of work right off the bat to get it off the ground. However, once you get it going, you can have videos that basically just sit on YouTube and make you money for five, 10, and maybe even 20 years. And the more videos you make, the more money that is going to be coming in. Every single video is like a soldier that's going out every single day and making you money. Now, what I personally recommend when it comes to YouTube is making an education channel. I'm not a big fan personally of making entertainment channels because I just think it's really, really difficult to make money from them. Whereas education channels where you're helping a real person solve a real problem is much easier to get views for and make money from. And I tried starting a bunch of different types of businesses and mostly failed at almost all of them. But YouTube was the one that I just kept coming back to over and over again because I just thought it was awesome. It was really fun. And I ended up succeeding at it. When I started taking YouTube really seriously, I was able to make it to $10,000 a month within a few months. And then I was able to quit my job. And it's been extremely fulfilling because I've gotten to help a bunch of people do the same thing. And there's a lot of other people out there doing this as well. For instance, this 31 year old makes $105,000 a month in passive income from her side hustle, and she only has to work two hours a day. So yeah, YouTube is incredible. But of course, I'm biased. And like I said, it is a lot of work, especially when you first start it. But if you focus on giving value to others, aka making educational content that solves real problems for real people, you're much, much more likely to succeed. And this is something I've helped a bunch of other people do. I've got a bunch of testimonials from other people that I've coached. And I actually do accept a few coaching students per month to help them grow and monetize their YouTube. Now I'm pretty picky about who I accept. I typically only accept people who have already tried to grow a YouTube channel or people who own businesses like consultants, coaches, online service providers, agency owners, etc., who want to start on YouTube. So if you fit one of those categories, you can go ahead and apply for my coaching down in the description as well as the pinned comment below. So yeah, YouTube gets a 10 out of 10 from me, but of course I'm biased. Next is one of the most 
popular ways of investing, which is rental real estate property. Now, this is not completely passive because there's a lot of things you have to do, such as vetting tenants, you have to fix things when things break, you have to maintain the upkeep of the property, et cetera, et cetera. However, if you hire a property manager, that is gonna take most of the work away from you, but it's also gonna eat into your profits. So there's definitely pluses and minuses to investing in real estate. And I think everybody basically knows how this works. You invest in a house, maybe you rent it out to people, you make money from the cash flow from people renting it and using that cash flow, you're paying off the mortgage. And then you might even have a little bit extra after that. And that's just pure profit for you. And then additionally, the house itself is going to become more valuable over time. And so you're making extra money in the form of equity. And then on top of that, you're also getting a bunch of amazing tax write-offs. So real estate truly is an amazing investment, but it is a lot more work than some of the other side hustles on this list. But with that being said, countless people are making money from it. I mean, just look at all of these different articles online from people who are making tons of money from this. This is widely known. This is not a secret. Real estate is one of the best ways to make money. So I'm not going to go over this that much. You know, it's semi-passive. I'll give it an 8.5 out of 10. Next is going to be renting out your car. So there's different apps you can use such as Turo, where you can actually just rent out your car. For instance, if your car is sitting at work for eight or 10 hours a day, you can just have somebody rent it while you're doing work. And there's lots of articles online of people who are making money doing this. For instance, this guy makes 14,000 per month renting his car to strangers. And yeah, this is a fairly new, but also fairly effective way of making money if you know how to do it right. It's not completely passive because you do have to have upkeep on the vehicle. So for that reason, I'll give it a seven out of 10 opportunity score. Next is going to be vending machines. And this is where you can turn snacks into stacks. That's right. All those vending machines that you see that have soda or snacks in them are usually owned by a person and they're making passive income from it. And vending machines are kind of like a silent salesperson that's making you money 24 seven. And it's kind of like owning your own personal mini mart on autopilot. And the truth is one vending machine is probably not going to make it to $10,000 a year. However, having hundreds of them scattered across a city or a state in strategic locations could bring you money like you've never dreamed before. And there's a really cool article online about how a 31 year old turned his side hustle into a $300,000 vending machine business. And he says he only works four hours a week. And there's another story of a girl who basically bought a vending machine at $1.6,000. And then it grosses her about $400 per month. So that's a pretty good return on investment. Now again, vending machines are not completely passive because you either have to replace the food or the soda yourself, or you have to hire somebody else to do it. And that's going to eat into your profits. But with that being said, this one's still pretty good. I'll give it a 7.5 out of 10 opportunity score. And there's one I'm going to tack on at the end here that's very similar to this one, but even better. And that is ATM machines. So ATMs are an even better way to make passive income. And I think everyone knows what an ATM is. You know, you basically go up to it, you put your debit or your credit card in, and you're able to get money out of it. And every time you do that, there's a transaction fee. But a lot of these ATMs are actually owned by individuals. They're not owned by banks. And so individual people are the ones who are making money from these ATMs. And this is an even better way to make money than vending machines. So I just thought I'd tack this one on at the end. I'll give that one an 8.5 out of 10 opportunity score. Next is going to be starting a membership website. And this is a website where you pay monthly to have access to content or whatever else they're serving on the website. So a platform that's really easy to do this on is Patreon. And the math here is pretty simple. If you charge $50 a month and you have a thousand members, that means you're going to be making $50,000 a month. But even just having a few hundred members could mean that you're making a few thousand dollars a month. And there's lots of people doing this. For instance, Gillian Perkins started a membership site and she made it to $10,000 a month within six months. So yeah, this one could be pretty good. Uh, probably a lot of work up front. Once you get it going though, it can be relatively passive. So because of the fact that it's a lot of work up front, I'm gonna give this one a seven out of 10 opportunity score. Next is going to be writing an ebook. So I actually recently talked to Joe, who is the CEO of the company Empire Flippers. And this is a company that basically helps to buy and sell businesses. So he's a business broker. And because of the fact that he's a business broker, he has unique knowledge about what types of businesses are doing really well on the internet right now. And I asked him, if you were just starting off as an entrepreneur, what type of business would you start off right now? What is the business that has the most opportunity? And I think this was about a year back that I asked him this. And he actually told me that he would start an ebook business using AI. And he would sell the ebooks on Amazon. And I was actually shocked when he suggested this. I really did not expect him to suggest that. But after looking into it a little bit, honestly, it's a pretty good opportunity, especially if you're a beginner. And basically, you just look for subjects that people are searching a lot about on Amazon, and then you make ebooks about that subject. And you can heavily utilize ChatGPT or other AI tools 
in order to help you do this. Now, is the AI going to do 100% of the work for you? No, it's not. But can it do a significant amount of the work for you? Yes. So this is a pretty good opportunity. Uh, I don't know if I 100% agree with Joe that this is the best opportunity, but I will go ahead and give it an 8.5 out of 10 opportunity score. Next is going to be creating a lead gen website for service businesses. So what exactly is lead gen? Well, it stands for lead generation. And this is basically where people search for like a plumber online or something like that. And then they would find your lead generation website, and then you can sell those leads to local plumbers. And a lot of this can actually be done automatically. And this is really valuable for service-based businesses because they don't want to have to spend a bunch of their time marketing. They just want people coming to them, AKA leads. Now this one is pretty complicated to get into, and it does take a lot of work up front. But once you have some websites that are getting a bunch of leads in, this is extremely passive. So this is a great way to make a ton of money, but it's also not as passive as a lot of the other ones on this list. So I'll give it a 7.5 out of 10 opportunity score. Next is going to be blogging. So this is a way that you can make money in many different ways. You could start your own blog, you could work as a freelancer, or you could write blogs and post them on websites such as medium.com. Now creating your own blog or posting on medium.com are a way to actually create passive income because medium.com will basically pay you for everyone that reads your articles. And creating your own blog is a lot of work up front, but eventually you'll start making money from AdSense and affiliate marketing. And then it also becomes very passive. So for instance, there was this guy named Adam who created a $300,000 a month blog where he wrote about different types of software across the internet. Then he was able to get it to $300,000 a month within just a few years. So this is one of the most tried and true methods of making money online. It is a lot of work up front, although you can pay other people to write the blogs for you if you have some cash. However, this is truly a way of getting passive income once you have enough articles written and it's making money month over month because you're just going to continue to get views coming in from people searching on Google for the next 10, 15, 20 years, or maybe more. So yeah, this is another really good one. I'll give it a nine out of 10 opportunity score. And the next one, you can invest in startups. And this is actually something that you can do without being a venture capitalist. So you can use platforms such as Start Engine, for instance, and this allows you to invest in startups. And the truth is most startups are going to fail, but if just one out of a hundred of your startup investments does really well, that can make up for all of the rest and then some. So venture capitalists know that most of their startup investments are going to fail, but that one that succeeds is going to make them 100, 200, 300, maybe even 500x return. So the risk is worth it for them. Now, by the way, I made a video called Seven Side Hustles that nobody's talking about that went viral, and it's going to give you a bunch more side hustle ideas. And you can check that video out by clicking right here.